And thank you all for tuning in to tonight's episode of Impact Showdown on July 5th, 2012. We are joining Impact Wrestling in progress right now as the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Robert Roode is meeting face-to-face with the X Division Champion Austin Aries one last time before they get it on in their match at Destination X this Sunday while The TNA general manager, Hulk Hogan, is looking on at the two, getting it on. It looks like they're about to throw it down as Austin Aries. He has his shirt off. Robert Roode, he is worked up. Hogan is just looking in approval. He likes what he sees. And we are seeing Austin Aries grabbing the microphone. And Robert Roode, he tried to take a cheap shot at the X Division champion by hitting him with his World Heavyweight title. But Austin was able to counter it and attack Robert Roode with his X Division title, and we now see Austin Aries holding up the TNA World Heavyweight title and the X Division title as Hogan claps in approval, as this could be a sign of things to come this Sunday at Destination X. And that is it for Impact Wrestling tonight. We just joined it in progress as it is now going off the air. And that's going to do it, folks. All right. So, for those of you that might have missed it from the very beginning, don't worry. We got you covered. And it's awesome that we are actually going to be covering Impact Wrestling tonight because if you were listening to our Tuesday night edition of the RCWR show, which was a deluxe edition at that, that had probably been to date One of the longest episodes that I've ever done, but it was just so jam-packed as we had to get you guys that weren't able to see Raw and SmackDown. We had got you all caught up because we had did a special episode that came on at 10 p.m. Eastern rather than our usual time at 11, and we covered Raw, we covered SmackDown. Had a great blast on that deluxe episode. If you haven't had the pleasure of checking it out, Jumpstart your weekend after you're done listening to this episode of Impact Showdown and check it out. It's been getting a lot of good buzz. We're going to switch it up a little bit different tonight. We're going to switch up the format a little bit. With regards to taking calls, I thought it'd be a really cool idea if we try to take phone calls near the end of the show. That way we can definitely make sure that we cover everything that we need to cover because I've noticed the past couple of weeks... I haven't been able to cover some really important information. I like to try to get you all, uh, get to you all rather. So we're going to switch it up just a little bit. So just relax. No, it was probably hot out today. You were probably sweating in the sun. Kick back, get yourself a nice cold drink, and let's go on ahead and have, let's have a little fun, shall we? So. Before we jump right into it, we definitely want to take this time out to thank those of you that are checking out tonight's episode on our website over at InfinityOneProductions.com. And for those of you that are listening to this episode right now over on BlogTalkRadio.com, and you can actually join in on the discussion as we have a chat room that's open. You can jump on in. There's a lot of discussion that's going on right now. We see our usual favorites that are in the chat room right now. NJ Brock, I love TNA Wrestling. Shout out to you all that are continuing to check out the episode and participate in the chat room. We greatly appreciate it. And, of course, we definitely got to give a shout out to those of you that are checking out the shows on our YouTube channel over at the RCWR Show. Do hope you all have had a fantastic Fourth of July holiday. I hope you all were able to enjoy some fireworks. Hope you all were able to go out and spend time with your loved ones, your family, maybe go to the movies. Most importantly, I hope you guys were able to get your eat on. Now, I have a really funny story to tell you guys, and it just wouldn't be right not telling you this story before we dive right into the wrestling talk, which is Fourth of July, I sat up. Me and my girlfriend, we saw Spider-Man, and it was a awesome movie. And I just have to say, as a Spider-Man fan and as one that has been collecting all of Spider-Man's comic books since the early 80s, I would have to say, as far as these this movie goes, when I compare it to the other movies that came out prior, this new Spider-Man movie, it puts the previous installments 
to shame. It makes them look like little kids playing in a sandbox. They did a phenomenal job with this movie. And, man, I mean, they broke serious numbers when they had premiered on Tuesday. I mean, just a record breaking in one day, on a Tuesday, they pulled in $35 million. Can you just imagine how much money they're going to be sitting on top of come next time, next Tuesday? I mean, I can only imagine. So you already know that the success of this movie, you already know, there's going to be a sequel, so let's just get that out the way right now. But if you haven't seen Spider-Man yet, definitely check it out. And like I said, uh, this Saturday I'm actually going to be conducting an interview with random fans that saw the Spider-Man movie. And we're going to try to have that episode be available later in the week because we got a very busy weekend as far as wrestling goes because we got the TNA Destination X pay-per-view that we got to cover but we definitely are going to be doing that little side show, so we'll keep you posted on that when it will be available. But, yeah, 4th of July, me and my girlfriend, we had a really nice, quiet time. We had finally got a chance to catch up with one another because, as I said on the RCWR show this past Tuesday, me, uh, my uh, co-producer Tammy, Zed, we all just went MIA from reporting anything wrestling-related-wise for like 24 hours. And I must say it was very refreshing to just take that little break. And me and my girlfriend, we sat up and we cleaned the backyard, got the leaves out of the back area finally, as I just kept saying, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. But here's the funny story. Just stay with me for a second because this is a really funny story and you guys are going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. Stay with me. So... We're doing the barbecue thing, and I'm trying to get the propane grill going, and it's not lighting up for the love of me. So I tell my girlfriend, I say, hey, can you get your dad on the phone because he knows how to work this. Help me out. So she gets him on the phone. Well, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Well, if you're doing this, then this should be happening, so forth. Nothing wasn't working. So my girlfriend says to me, well, honey, Why don't you go find one of the butane lighter fluid sticks that's in the drawer, and that should do it. I said, okay. So I go. I'm looking for it. I can't find it. I'm like, ah, and I'm ready to eat, damn it. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have to go a little ghetto. So I take a little rolled up piece of paper, and I, you know, go over to the stove, and I light it up, and then I hurry up. I go outside, and I... You know, I have no gloves on or nothing, folks, so you know what's about to happen, right? So keep in mind, the grill is on. There's just no flame. The propane is kicking. I put, like, half of my arm into the grill to light it, and my arm was on fire for three seconds. I am not exaggerating. My arm was on fire for three seconds, and I yelled real loud like the human torch, Flame on! And it was just ridiculous. I just thought I'd share that story with you guys because I just thought it was hilarious. I was scared as hell, but after I saw that my hand was okay, and luckily several pieces of hair is now gone from my hand and arm, uh, well, I'm I'm still feeling pretty good. I'm still alive. So on that note, (laughs) let's go ahead and let's talk about Tonight's episode of Impact Wrestling, that just went off the air. And, you know, as much as I enjoyed this episode of Impact Wrestling, I had a little bit of a problem because there were so many things that was going on during this episode, folks, that you almost forgot that there was a pay-per-view coming up this Sunday. I actually had to remind myself by going to TNA's website because I actually had forgot the date of the pay-per-view. And then when I found out it was this Sunday, I'm saying to myself, oh, wow, already. And then I'm watching tonight's episode of Impact Wrestling Live, and there just really wasn't that much of a sale for the pay-per-view This Sunday, I don't know how many of you have been checking that out, have been scooping that within recent months, but it seems like when it comes to that final installment of Impact Wrestling, 
they don't sell the pay-per-view hard enough. Now, that could be a different story for the Slammiversary pay-per-view. I thought they did a better job selling that pay-per-view more, but I, I wasn't really too satisfied with how they were selling Destination X for this Sunday, but we'll recap more about that in just a little bit. So our show had kicked off with... Bully Ray, who comes down to the ring, and he says he has a big, big, huge announcement to make, and that hell must have froze over because Bully Ray, he's going live on Twitter right now. It's not Twitter. Twitter. That's what he's calling it. And the fans, they start chanting at him. He sucks, and Bully Ray says, hey, I might suck right now. But I'm about to be trending right now. And he would send out a tweet right there live at the jump start of Impact Wrestling. Now, for those of you that might have not took the liberty of checking him out, because he did give his Twitter handle on Impact Wrestling Live, for those of you that were not able to check out his tweet, this is what he said. Do you know who I am? Real Bully 5150 is now on Twitter. Return uh, return tweet this now, or I will beat your ass. Hashtag Cavzilla. So welcome to Twitter, Mr. Bully Ray. And from there, folks, Bully Ray would sit up and say, okay, let's go on to business now. Joseph Parks, get your ass out here. Joseph Parks, he comes down. A little shaky as he gets into the ring. And Bully Ray gets all up in his face. He says, hey, you want a piece of me? You want to take me on one-on-one? Well, you know what? You got it. I accept. And from there, Joseph, he says, you know, I usually don't give legal advice. But the fact is, you know, well, I'll give you this advice for free. And that is. He uses this big word that really pisses off Bully Ray. He said, present, uh, however you pronounce it, and that kind of made Bully Ray a little bit upset because he really wasn't sure what the heck he was being called, and he told Joseph Parks to take that word and stick it up his ass. And Joseph Parks would cut off Bully Ray and say to him, you know what, I'm getting sick and tired of you. I'm getting sick and tired of you always imposing your will onto Me and other people, we're all sick of it. I'm quite sure the people in attendance, they're sick of it. I know I'm sick of it. And it's going to stop. And Bully Ray, he says, okay, well, you know what? As long as we're going to have our match just like it was at Slammiversary, anything goes, right? Joseph Park says, yes, anything goes. Anything and everything. Joseph says, yes, anything and everything. Bully Ray, he says, good. Because after I beat you, we got this right here. And he presents a piece of document. Now, this document would turn out to be a restraining order against Abyss. Now, if Abyss is to even set a foot in the arena near the ring, if Bully Ray even thinks he's smelling him, he will have Abyss sent to jail where he will rot for the rest of his life. From there, Bully Ray, he gives Joseph Parks the restraining order paperwork, and as a lawyer would probably do it, they would look over the paperwork to make sure that everything is legit, there's no loopholes, and Joseph Parks, he's about to really focus in on that paperwork, but Bully Ray would take a cheap shot from behind and lay out Joseph Park in the middle of the ring before heading back to the stage area. Backstage we go now where we see Hawk Hogan, who is talking with the X Division champion, Austin Aries, letting him know that in just three days, it's going to be probably one of the biggest moments in Austin's life. And Austin, he counters that by saying it's going to be the biggest moment for the company. Hawk Hogan, in the meantime, he says, well, you know, I need your title tonight. I need it before the end of tonight. 
And Austin Aries would say, hey, you know, don't worry about it. You're going to get it before the end of the night. Uh, I was under the impression I could hold it until Sunday, though. Hulk Hogan, no, I need the belt tonight just to make sure everything's on the up and up. And Hogan would reiterate to Austin Aries, hey, do everything that you can because everything that you do this Sunday is going to determine the future and the direction of this company. Now, from there, folks, we would see a recap of what had transpired last Thursday as Daniels revealed to Dixie Carter, Claire, who probably already knew, that AJ Styles is the baby daddy. Now, we already went into great length about my disgust over this silly storyline as they're trying very hard to continue this. Well, we would easily go to a backstage segment where we see TNA president Dixie Carter along with Bruce Pritchard, Al Snow, and they're all having talks about some random stuff. And we got the guy from the Wonder Years who's got the little camera and he's doing the interview questions as usual. And he asks us Dixie Carter, so how do you like the guys that are going to be participating in the X Division tournament tonight? And Dixie Carter, she gives her thoughts on it, says she's very pleased, she's very excited, and then quickly it would turn into, do you honestly believe that AJ is the father? And Dixie Carter, she says she doesn't want to talk about that, To you know, she's not interested, and the question just keeps being thrown at her over and over, and she doesn't want to have anything to do with talking about AJ and the infidelity issue. From there, we would go to our first match, which would see the television title be defended once again as Devon is putting it on the line against Crimson. Now, I know me and Zed were talking about this during the night as soon as we saw this match, and I actually had pointed it out before we even saw the television match. I said, okay, so let me see if I got this straight. Devon hasn't defended the title, I believe, in about two weeks and Hulk Hogan said a couple of months back that Devon is supposed to be defending the title every single week because that's what he wants to see for whoever is holding the television title. Now, this would be nicely covered up by Mike Tenay and Taz, who would reveal that Hulk Hogan had decided to put the television title on hold from being defended for a little bit due to the Bound for Glory series, well, that might be all fine and dandy. Nice save. We'll give it to you for, for this week. Just keep the keep the title streak being defended going is all I have to say. I am still passionate about if you miss one week defending the title, you should be stripped of the title. I mean, I don't know. Some people might not agree with that, but I think if you're really going to make it be – really serious, really legit, no matter what, that title should just be defended each and every single week. Because when you think about it, especially with tonight's matches, there was only a total of five matches. So you know where this is probably going to be going. There's probably going to be maybe a series of backstage segments, lots of people talking. You could easily cut two right there, and that's another match right there. They could have did that a couple of weeks back, and the television title defense would still remain intact since Hogan made the announcement. That's just me, you know, that's just what I think about that. But anyway, we uh, had our first match there as Devon had defended his title against Crimson. Devon, I must admit, man, he continues to look impressive, but the fact that he got a clean win over Crimson tonight, that just really solidifies in my mind that TNA does not really think that much of Crimson anymore. Remember, folks, his undefeated streak came to an end at the Slammiversary pay-per-view at the hands of James Storm, and he lost cleanly to James Storm. Now you follow that up with him losing cleanly to Devon, and you just can't help but wonder what exactly does the future hold for Crimson, who seemed to at one point have a promising career as he was being pushed harder than the blueprint Matt Morgan. 
So really interesting development right there. Does he still have a chance to be successful? Or is he going to be another Big Robbie? Who knows, folks? Who knows? But what was really interesting was post-match, as we would see the lovely Vixen herself, Killer Queen, Madison Rain, come down to the ring looking ever so sexy, and you're thinking, okay, it's time. We're about to finally see who it is that she has a crush for, and she gets in the ring, and Devon is just looking on at her, and I am sure that I was not the only one that was thinking the same thing when we are looking at Madison Rain, looking at Devon. I'm saying to myself, oh, snap. Madison Rain got a little jungle fever. Madison Rain wants some dark chocolate. All right, that's what's up. But no, that was not the case, folks. What actually ended up happening was Madison Rain pushes Devon to the side. She ambushes the referee who was doing the Devon versus Crimson match, which was Earl Hepner, jacks him up in a corner and just start slobbing down on him good. I mean, nice, big, wet tongue in the throat, kisses. And Earl Hebner is just standing there like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And Madison Rain, she leaves the ring, and I could just feel for Earl Hebner. I'm thinking to myself the entire time as I'm seeing everything that transpired, Earl, I hope you don't have a heart attack right there, buddy, and, uh, man, you know, I hope you can keep up with Madison, because if not, man, you're going to need a big old crate of Viagra to keep up with that girl, because <laughs> that's just, I don't know where this is going, very nice twist, I definitely am very curious to see where this is going to lead it's already formulating in my head what could possibly be the outcome of all this. Maybe there is something in particular she's trying to get out of Earl Hepner and no for you sick perverts out there. That is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about something on along the lines of possibly maybe setting herself up for maybe a future match for the knockouts title. Maybe she's trying to take the avenue of having a referee be in her back pocket to make sure that the matches that she wins from here on out gets called right. Who knows? But very interesting development right there. I'm very curious to see where this is going to go. But I only have one suggestion for TNA Creative, the writers. If you're going to go down this route, if you're going to go with a possible love angle, and you're not going to go with the angle that I'm suggesting, that I'm putting out there, I only have one suggestion, and that would be to wrap up what's going on with ODB and Eric Young. We haven't seen them on TV for several weeks. They have the TNA knockout titles. Half the day on time, you forget that there's even t uh, TNA tag knockout titles because they aren't being defended on a regular basis. And as a result of that, it almost kind of comes off as if Creative doesn't really have anything for ODB and Eric Young. They aren't really sure what to do with them. Well, I think if you're going to go with this Madison Rain angle, it, it just seems to make sense to me to try to bring back the ODB and the Eric Young thing, try to give that a little bit of a closure or maybe have it end on a little bit of a cliffhanger and then focus more on this Madison Rain. I don't know, maybe they could juggle both storylines at the same time, but there's just that bigger part of me that just wants to see that storyline wrap up so we can see where this is possibly going to go because my whole thing is if they're trying to approach it from a – Love angle standpoint, well, you already got one love angle. So why do you need a second one is my point. So, But still, I'm very curious to see where this is going to go. Now, from there, we see a backstage segment where Chris Saban is hobbling his way 
to the Impact Arena. He's going to talk to the uh, Impact fans and let them know what's been going on with him since he had injured his other knee a couple of weeks back. As he would come out and he would say, hey, I was out on injury for a year. I came back. I'm trying to push it really hard. I'm trying to go at it hard. I injured my other knee. My family, my friends, they're telling me, hey, maybe you should give up on this wrestling. Maybe it's time for you to retire. This is something that they told me last year. This is something that they told me again after I injured my other knee. And, you know, I'm not really sure. But before he can even finish his train of thoughts, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Robert Roode would come out and he would say to him, in true heel fashion, and I was just very impressed with Robert Roode tonight, just when you think you've seen everything that could possibly come out of Robert Roode. He just keeps elevating his game even more, and tonight was no different, folks, as Robert Roode he comes down there to the ring, pretending that he's wiping a tear from his face, and he says to Chris Saban, oh, such a sad, tragic story, and... Saban, we've known each other for a long time, and to see you out here with the knee brace, with the crutch, with the shades over your eyes to cover your tears, it's pretty pathetic. Just like every other X Division wrestler, you're pathetic. You come out here, you piss, moan, and groan, look at you. You break one leg last year, and then you break another leg. We got Jesse Sorsen, who broke his neck. All of you X-Division wrestlers, and this was the beautiful part that I loved right here, as he just criticized the hell out of the X-Division wrestlers by saying that all they know how to do is risk it all every night and get no reward at the end. While speaking of taking risk. He would point out how the poster child of the X Division, Austin Aries, will be at risk as he's putting it all on the line as he relinquishes his X Division title to be in the main event to face Robert Roode for his world heavyweight title. And he will be just like Chris Sabin, he promises, which is going to be taking the risk and getting no reward and having his career end just like that folks and from there true hill fashion generating great heat from those in attendance he kicks the crutch off of chris saban chris saban he just automatically falls to the ground and robert rude he just starts going to work on that knee that's wrapped up in that brace just starts going to work on it kicking it X Division champion Austin Aries would hurry up down to the ring to try to come to the aid of Saban, but Robert Roode, he already did the damage. He's hauling ass as he's just looking on very pleased at what he did to Chris Saban. I love how they're making Chris Saban still relevant. And, hey, when Chris Saban is 100% better, there's an angle right there. I mean, can you just imagine it, folks? The writing is right there. On the wall, once Chris Saban is 100% better, yeah, the TNA champion, Robert Roode, he can continue to sit up and try to dodge Chris Saban all he wants. But remember, there's that special episode that happens once a week called Open Fight Night. So sooner or later, Chris Saban is going to get his revenge on Robert Roode for what had happened tonight. Mark the words right there. We will definitely be seeing them lock it up when the time is right. Now, from there, folks, we see our second match of the evening, which was a mind-blowing match, in my opinion, which saw Dakota Darka taking on Flip Casanova. I was just really, really into this match. I couldn't help but feel as though there was one or two botched moves that occurred that seemed a little bit reckless, and they came both from Flip Casanova, who at one point during this contest, he does this 
I guess a sunset flip, if you will, and he just lands wrong. By landing wrong, he the wrong part of his body just gets into the face of Dakota, and Dakota just slowly starts bleeding. Now, the action would go back into the ring, and by this point, Dakota just has blood just coming all down his face, it's on his chest, it's on his stomach, and Matt props to this kid for just continuing to go on with this match because you could tell he was definitely hurt, but he was sucking it up, and I love that. I love when a wrestler, they get injured like that, and they don't panic, they keep it cool, and they just keep going at it because you'd be surprised. Some people, very rare that they see their own blood, they see it, they freak out, and when you start freaking out, it makes you dangerous. It makes the person that you're dancing in the ring with, you know, it puts them at risk. So I love how he kept it cool in the ring, love it. But then later on, we would see another devastating maneuver that would come from Flip Casanova as he did this weird spinning somersault and he just landed on Dakota with his two feet like standing up in a position kind of like a Bruce Lee type of deal if you are into the martial arts films and you remember how Bruce Lee used to do it back in the day where he used to flip in the air and he used to stomp down on his opponent's stomach it was something similar to that maneuver impressive nonetheless as Casanova picked up the victory very intense matchup right here if you didn't get the chance to watch this match, highly recommend that you go check it out on YouTube. It was definitely an on-point match. I just felt that Flip Casanova, he just needs to fine-tune his craft just a little bit more, try to keep it as reckless as possible because I was just really scared there for Dakota because he – you got to give that kid props. He got messed up pretty good in that match. Now, in the backstage segment, we go now as we see Miss Tess Mocker, who promises that she will be getting her hands on Gail Kim next week, as we were supposed to see Gail Kim take on Tess Mocker for the TNA Knockouts title this week. But Gail Kim, she sat up, and apparently she's hiding through lawyers now, and basically what she was somehow able to pull off was having her match be pushed back to next week. So we're going to be seeing Tessmacher take on Gail Kim for the Knockouts title. Now, in the meantime, we're going to see Tag Team Knockouts action as Tessmacher is going to be teaming up with the lovely Cougar lady herself, Tara, to take on Gail Kim and Madison Rain, so that's going to be a interesting matchup right there, and it was. It was a pretty good matchup. I loved it. Definitely have to give a shout out to our good friend Dave. He had sent us a tweet on Twitter, and he said, "Hey, how about Tess Mocker? She finally did a finisher. Yeah, she finally did something. She didn't do a crappy roll up pin like she usually does. It. She didn't." Jack somebody's finisher to get the job done. She finally did something that was, ah, okay. Now she just needs to put a name to it. You know, that's that's my whole thing. Now you just got to put a name to it. She's improving. If I sounded like in the past I was always getting on her case, I wasn't. I've been saying it since day one. I have felt that she continues to be a wrestler that wants to improve her craft and get better I've given her nothing but good praise I just was getting a little tired of seeing her always get a roll up on somebody as this point in her career especially being a knockouts champion she should definitely have some type of a finishing maneuver by now and now it looks like she finally has one now she just has to give it a name I don't know. Maybe she could call it the Stars and Stripes Slam. I don't know. That would be kind of wicked. I don't know. But we would see Tara and Tess Mocker pick up the victory right here. And we're being teased that the location for Bound for Glory will be revealed soon. Remember, folks, Bound for Glory isn't supposed to happen until October. Now, 
Backstage segment, we see AJ Styles, who's getting ready to walk out to the Impact Zone to answer these allegations that he is Claire's baby father. And, man, I can't wait for this storyline to conclude. It's just giving me a bad combination of Cheaters meets an episode of Maury Polrick, and I'm just getting sick and tired of this whole baby drama look. If y'all are going to be going down this route, this route, why don't you have, why don't you have Maury make a special guest appearance on an episode of Impact Live, and maybe they could. Now you know what, as stupid as that might sound, this might actually give them a little bit of ratings if you think about it, because I cannot imagine how the ratings are when they have teenagers and stay-at-home moms that be kicking back watching this show. Because the show's been on for I don't know how many years now, at least at least close to 20 years. Uh, 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 lovely Tammy, about about 20 years, right? Maury Polrick, he's been on the air? Yeah, about, about 20 years. So, I mean, it just makes sense for them to go on ahead. Maybe they could reach out to him. Feel me for a second, folks. This actually sounds like a pretty good story. And remember, you heard it here first. They want to get down to the bottom of who the baby daddy is. They bring Maury on, and Maury could have a little side panel thing. He could have the cue cards. He could have the little chairs, and maybe they could do a little something in the backstage area or in the middle of the ring, actually. Do it in the ring in front of the impact crowd, and they can reveal the paternity test. And who knows if it turns out... AJ isn't the baby father, then maybe we could do something stupid like what usually happens on an episode of Maury, where once it's revealed, you're not the baby father. And you have the woman who just starts screaming her ass off, and she just starts running and crying all the way to the backstage area like an idiot. Maybe they could do a little something like that with Claire, and Maury could catch up with her in a backstage segment and goes, there, there, there. We're going to find out who your baby daddy is. We're not going to stop. Any help you need, we will provide it to you. And then maybe we could have a running gag with that where we see Claire pop up a couple of weeks later. It's Christopher Daniels, and now the tables have been turned on Daniels. And Daniels is denying it, blah, this, blah, that. And then, again, we see Maury pop up. Daniels, you are not the baby father. And, you know, Daniels could be acting like a true heel. And we see Claire's dumb ass go run off to the backstage area, cry again. And, you know, you just do it like that for a couple of weeks until eventually she just fades out. You like that story, don't you? That, that That's a good angle, don't you think? Is it going to happen? No, but... If I was writing this crap, this is exactly what I would do. And by crap, I'm just talking about this particular storyline. It needs to wrap up ASAP because it's too distracting. It's too silly. The payoff is not going to be good. I can kind of see where TNA wanted to go with this, but the payoff, the way it's being executed right now, it's just not going to work. Kill it while it's still early. That's that's my motto. Now, we would see AJ, and he would sit up and say, hey, you know, it, it was bad enough that I got accused of sleeping around with TNA President Dixie Carter. Now it's being said that I'm the baby daddy of this kid. What what the heck is going on? I, I just don't grasp this. What What the heck? And we would see Kazarian and Daniels come out. And Kazarian, cutting one rare, strong promo, guy doesn't get enough credit in the world as he tells AJ, you don't get it. You don't get that you got a druggy whore pregnant. You don't grasp the severity of these things, you redneck so-and-so. And AJ Styles, he was feeling those words as he said, I'll show you redneck. Won't you come on down here and let me beat you up a little bit? Well, Daniels would intervene and he would say, look, no more dancing around the truth. These are allegations. I have proof. And AJ Styles would cut him off and say, you know, forget about you. Forget about your proof. Let's be honest. This isn't about Claire. This isn't about Dixie. This is about you, Christopher Daniels, and me, AJ Styles. This all goes back to last year, Destination X. You had something to prove. 
You came up short. I beat you, and you've been jealous ever since. You've been a jealous prick ever since I beat you. And the difference between last year and this year is that this year I want to face you in a match, and it's not going to be any type of match. It's going to be a last man standing match. And he would point out to Daniels that you're no man, and I'm going to prove it by shedding you up once and for all. Great stuff right there. That's what it needs to just be about. Let's just see these two guys get it on. We know these two know how to put on a great classic five-star match. They've never disappointed. Let's just get all the little silly storylines out the way. Let's make some magical memories happen here this Sunday. Now, from there, backstage, we see Hulk Hogan, who is at a table, and he's about to share his thoughts on what he thinks is going to happen this Sunday between Rude and Aries when we see some weird white guy with shades and a baseball hat pop up, and he says, hey, you know, Hulk Hogan, this is for you. We're coming for you. And he leaves, and Hulk Hogan, he has this yellow envelope, and he opens it up and see these weird note that says, we're coming next week, and cards that reads aces and eights. Now, I didn't reveal this early on because I wasn't sure if somebody was being a prankster or what have you. But these guys, whoever these three guys are that had attacked Sting, and I am not pulling your chain, folks. We were actually one of the first people, one of the very first people that Aces and Eights had contacted. Now, they had sent out a direct tweet to us over at Infinity One Productions, and then they went on ahead and they started sending random tweets to other people. But we were one of the first people that they had hit up back when they only had two people following them. And we sent out a challenge to them. We said, okay, look, why don't you explain your actions, why you attack Sting? Why don't you maybe give us, you know, something that we can chew on until we see you guys whenever? You're more than welcome to call into the show. So I put a challenge out to them. I said, hey, put your money in your mouth, where your mouth is, come on to the show. Explain your actions for what you did to Sting. Now, they haven't accepted that challenge, but for those of you that haven't had the liberty of checking them out on Twitter, you can do so by looking them up at their handle, which is at the Aces and Eights. And Eights would be the actual number eight followed by an S. And, hey, who knows, maybe they'll accept that challenge. Maybe they'll randomly make a phone call. Who knows? But we were one of the first people that had came in contact with them. We didn't really know what to think of it because we get so many people that try to add us on Twitter. A lot of them, they come off like bots. We're not really sure, you know, who's who. And at first, these guys, they did look very alarming. But... The more and more you think about it, and then we recently had heard that Dave Lagana has started pushing the Aces and Eights Twitter handle, so these guys definitely are legit. Now, last we checked, they don't have that much of a following. They're at, wow, and it, it jumped within like the past hour. They were at 519. Now they have 618 followers, so maybe by the same time next week, maybe they'll be pushing 2,000. Who knows? But we put a challenge out there. Anytime they want to call, they're more than welcome to call. Very curious to see where this is going to go as it looks like these guys are going to be making some type of a presence next week. Should be interesting right there. Now from there, folks, we have our fourth match of the evening, which sees Kenny King taking on Lars only. Now, not a great match, but Kenny King was pretty much in my eyes, at least. I'm not sure how you all probably had watched this match as you were viewing it, but to me, it just seemed like Kenny King was really doing all the work. It seemed like he really didn't need Lars only in there. He 
could have just wrestled himself, and it would have been a fantastic freaking match. And Kenny King, he would pick up the win in great fashion post-match. Christy Kimmy would uh, catch up with him and say, how does it feel? And King would say, hey, I'm not here to play games. And Christy Hemi, I know you can't stop looking at me. Look, you ain't seen nothing yet. As come Destination X, a new king is going to be crowned. Nice play off of his name there. And from there, folks, we see a really cool footage, video package, if you will, of Austin Aries, who's given a really great story about how he used to weigh about a buck twenty and how he had to teach himself how to eat right, great nutrition, learn how to build muscle mass, and now he's pushing 175, 180. Looks to be in phenomenal freaking shape. And he's talking about everything that he's accomplished since he's been in TNA and how on one night being Destination X, how he has a chance at greatness. It was a really great video package right there. Now from there, backstage segment, we would see King cross paths with Austin Aries and King knows that it's going to be a honor to fill in Austin's shoes as he feels that Austin's leaving a serious void after no longer being the X Division champion come this Sunday. And from there Austin Aries is asked to share his thoughts on having to relinquish the title come later tonight. The only thing Austin Aries is saying, hey, I'm keeping track of the time. I still have until, what, 10 o'clock to cough up the title? I'm going to do it. Don't worry about it. And our fifth match of the night, folks, it's our main event, which is the Bound for Glory series match. It's our main event match as points are up for grabs as we see the Cowboy, James Storm, taking on Jeff Hardy. This match, very, very physical, very intense. Great classic matchup. It just had me sitting up wanting to see these two guys get it on even more as we would see Jeff Hardy pick up the victory there. And for you all that have not been able to keep track of the Bound for Glory leaderboards, we got your hook up as Jeff Hardy picking up the win. He definitely moved up a few spots. Here's your current Bound for Glory leaderboard stats as James Storms. Storm is still leading, folks, despite suffering that loss from Jeff Hardy earlier tonight. He has 36 points. Samoa Joe, he's at 27. Magnus is at 14. Jeff Hardy is tied with Magnus at 14. So you only know it's just a matter of time before probably these two guys might cross paths in a one-on-one type scenario. Kurt Angle is at number five with 10 points. Mr. Anderson trails with nine points. The Pope, D'Angelo De Niro, has seven points. RVD, Rob Van Dam, seven points. Christopher Daniels, five points. Outside looking in with no points is Bully Ray, Robbie E., and A.J. Stiles. Now, from there, folks, we see Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe recap. Who could forget that infamous night where Kurt Angle had made his presence felt in the Impact Arena as he got in the face of Samoa Joe and head-butted the hell out of him to begin one really awesome rivalry. Great moment to be a TNA fan way back then. That was a really intense moment. I remember that night as if it was just sometime last week. It's that fresh in my mind. Now, our Destination X card for this Sunday. Now, there hasn't been that many matches named. There's most likely going to be more matches added as the days go on into the weekend. But here's what we have so far. We got the Ultimate X match, which is to crown a new X Division champion. We got the last man standing match, AJ Styles taking on Christopher Daniels. And our Bound for Glory series continues as Samoa Joe will be taking on Hawk Hogan. So more matches will be named for this weekend is out. Hopefully we'll have the very latest as coming up 
Friday night, we're going to be getting you ready for the Destination X pay-per-view, as we're going to be doing a Call That Match special. More on that in just a little bit. And from there, it's our main attraction of the night as we see Hulk Hogan make his way out to the Impact Arena. And he calls out Austin Aries to officially get the X Division title. But instead, he gets Robert Roode. And Robert Roode, he gets all up in his face, tells him to shut up. And Hulk Hogan would say, hey, you're no Austin Aries. Robert Roode, he just did not care. He let Hulk Hogan have it. I mean, he was mocking his brother catchphrase. Roode just really doing a fantastic job generating that heat. He is just working so well when he gets paired up with anybody. But I love the way he has been working off of Hulk Hogan. He seems to be doing a better job working with Hogan than he was when he was working with Sting. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Maybe it's just the fact that he's in the same ring with Hulk Hogan. He's just able to really play off of him because if you really compare the two, Sting did a lot more to put over Robert Roode. Hulk Hogan, on the other hand, he's not really doing too much. I don't mean from a physical standpoint, but from a verbal standpoint he's not really doing that much of anything he can really just stand there and he's just really able to help Robert Roode go over even more not that Robert Roode needs that help going over it just makes it even more intense more exciting to watch when he is paired up with Hogan and from there, we would see the X Division champion, Austin Aries, come out. And the two of them, they would get into their last little bit of final words as Robert Roode is pointing out to Hogan that your stupid little option C, it's not. It's going to come up being very short. It's going to be nothing but a failure. All your false hope, your false promises, you're just going to come up really short as this Sunday, Destination X, the failure of the entire X Division, the blood of Austin Aries will be on your hands. And Austin Aries, he says, look, you know, we really don't have to wait until Sunday. We can get it on right here and now. As it looked as if the two of these guys were going to throw it down in the middle of the ring, right in front of the TNA general manager, Hawk Hogan. But instead... We would see Robert Roode kind of decide, ah, not nah, change of heart. But he would try to attack, uh, to attack Austin Aries from behind. But it did not work as Austin Aries had managed to counter Roode's attack as Roode was getting ready to hit him with the TNA World Heavyweight title. And Austin Aries would counter with his own attack, which landed successfully as he hit him with the X Division title to send Rude getting out of the ring and looking on at his challenger this Sunday as Austin Aries briefly held up both the X Division title and the TNA World Heavyweight title before Hulk Hogan grabbed the X Division title, letting Austin hang on to that world title, perhaps a taste of things to come. Who knows, folks, but that is going to do it for your episode of TNA Impact Wrestling. Overall, quality-wise, production-wise, fantastic episode. Great episode. I loved every single match. I didn't really have a problem with any segment in particular. All the matches were good. I love the fact that one week we kind of got a ring of honor type of deal going on and or, or or PWG thing going on and then this week we got ring of honor wrestlers it seems like that were popping up tonight to help push the X Division tournament. I love how things are just playing out for the X Division. I love how the Rude Austin Aries angle is playing out. I I could only find one thing to say negative about TNA this week is that I need to see a better job of them plugging a pay-per-view. 
I can't stress it enough because you really want to sell that home. If you can really sell that pay-per-view more, make those people want to invest in buying it. Because, I mean, honestly, if you really think about it, you only have one match that they really seem to have been pushing the past couple of weeks, which is Austin Aries, Robert Root. Try to push more. Don't just – I know that's the main attraction, but – Try to sell more matches. I just want to see that. Maybe they can get that straightened up as they go on to Bound for Glory. And by the way, the location of Bound for Glory, it did get revealed by Mike Tanay and Taz. It turns out the Bound for Glory location is going to be in Phoenix, Arizona on Sunday, October 14th, if I am not mistaken. I actually have my... Uh, calendar right here. Let me just confirm that. I believe I said October 17th. No, that is incorrect. It's going to be October 14th, folks. Bound for Glory, the pay-per-view. It's going to be coming to Phoenix, Arizona on Sunday, October 14th. I know, long time away, but it is what it is. This week, though, very pleased with TNA as they are making a strong effort to try to go into the Destination X pay-per-view, I'd have to give it a I'd have to give it a 8.5 out of 10 for this week. I, I was very pleased with what I saw. I think the X Division matches those had really stole the show right there, in my opinion. And this is what we're going to do right now because we still have plenty of show to go. We got to cover. What all has been happening wrestling-related news-wise as we ended on a serious cliffhanger on the RCWR show this past Tuesday? If Of course, it's TNA news-related-wise as we just had got hit with a number of wrestlers that decided they wanted to part ways from the company. Now, some of you, you all may already know that, but what you probably don't know is the alarming rate that wrestlers have been sitting up and leaving the TNA organization in just this year alone, folks. That's what's really the mind-boggling what the hell that's going on right now. So we're going to do this. We're going to go on ahead, and we're going to take a brief pause, and then when we come right back, we're going to jump right into some wrestling-related news. So hope you're enjoying the show so far. Hang tight. And we're going to be right back in about, oh, I'd say we'll be back in about, who knows, maybe about 60 seconds. I think that should suffice. Kick back, relax. You're listening to a new episode of Impact Showdown on July 5th, 2012. We'll be right back, folks. Hang tight. All right, and we're back. You're listening to the Thursday night edition of Impact Showdown on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show. And we're also over at our own website, over at infinityoneproductions.com. So we got a little bit of major news that we would like to share with you all as, guess what? Our Tuesday night edition of the RCWR show is going to be making a rare Monday night appearance coming July 23rd, immediately after the 1,000th episode of WWE Raw. It's very rare that we make a Monday night appearance. This will be, I believe, our second or third time making a rare appearance, and we always love it the few times that we do pop up. We definitely want to partake in discussing what we thought of the 1,000th episode of Raw, and by we say we, I will not be alone. The lovely 
co-producer Tammy. She's going to be getting in front of the mic for a another rare appearance. And we're going to have one or two surprise guests that's going to be helping out with the show. So definitely bookmark that. Give yourself a reminder. Circle your calendar. Circle the date on your calendar. You know the drill. It's going to be July 23rd, immediately after WWE Raw, as they'll be making the move to be three hours. And it's very interesting because latest word on the wrestling beat right now is that WWE Raw, they may only do this three-hour extravaganza up until January of next year. And a lot of the talent management, they are really hoping that they will go back to their two-hour format. So kind of sounds as if maybe once TNA is done doing their 13-week, consecutive weeks at that of being live, that a little bit further down the road, WWE, they might go on ahead and go back to a two-hour format. Hey, if it's a success, keep it rolling. But if not, and I must admit, Based on what has transpired with the latest WWE Raw ratings, I must say I would be a little bit concerned right now for WWE because it just really hasn't been that good of a month for them really in June as they go into July. As July's numbers, even though it's early, is just not kicking off for them right now and They need to hit a home run when it comes time for them to do the 1,000th episode of Raw. And for those of you that might have not been able to keep track of WWE's ratings, well, we, we got you hooked up. Check this out. This is from June 4th, the beginning of the month, right on up onto what they had did earlier this week. Now, just hang tight. June 4th we saw a 2.72 rating. Now, you got to keep in mind, that was the episode that featured John Cena taking on Michael Cole in the main event. Now, the next week, which was June 11th, we saw Raw get a 3.2 rating, and that was due to the return of Vince McMahon. The week after, we see the June 18th episode, which pulled in a 3.4 rating. Now, this was because it was the episode that aired post No Way Out pay-per-view. June 25th, we saw it pull in a 3.3 rating. Now, this was the episode that featured the return of Diamond Dallas Page and Doink the Clown. And uh, this past Monday night, we just saw it do a 3.2 rating. And what was the main highlight of that night? Well, we would see... AJ push CM Punk off of the apron to go crashing into the table with Daniel Bryan. I'm trying to remember for the love of me who had returned on that week, but it's not coming to me right now. It couldn't have been. Was it Diamond Dallas Page that returned? I, 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 I can't remember right now, but, hey, it'll come to me when I least expect it. But anyway, folks, that just gives you an idea of what's been going on with the latest trend of the WWE Raw ratings. Hopefully they can pick this up as it's close to that 1,000th episode because they need a home run. I mean, really, when I say they need a home run, they need to be scoring at least a 3.8 to a 4.0. I know that probably sounds far out of reach, but with all the hype that they're doing, that's what they need. So let's stay with TNA Wrestling for a little bit. Like I said, we had ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger on the Tuesday night edition of the RCWR show. And there is just a surprising, alarming number of wrestlers who used to work for TNA. And it just seems like they are just dropping off of the company roster on a monthly basis. Now, for those of you that might have missed it, On Sunday, we had Angelina Love ask and was granted her release from TNA Wrestling, and this shocked the wrestling community 
to no end. I mean, it sent such a shock wave that she ended up trending for the entire day. I believe somebody said she began trending at 6 a.m., and it just went nonstop from there, and she had received nothing but support from fans. She received support from those in TNA. Just heartfelt, heartfelt words just continued to come in for Angelina and some of the wrestlers that had, you know, things to say. Velvet Sky, such a damn shame. So much left there to do. I know you're going to move on to big things, but good luck as always. I love you. Madison Rain, I'll miss seeing your beautiful face. I can't wait to see the awesome things you're about to accomplish, though. Devon, God is with you, girl. See you soon. Tara, good luck. Angelina Love, you will have success no matter where your journey takes you. I mean, that just gives you an idea on what everybody has been saying about Angelina. And I can honestly tell you with heartfelt sincerity from a wrestling standpoint, from a fan standpoint, I have been watching this girl for, it seems like, at least the past four or five years. And I was loving it when she was teaming up with Velvet Sky and they were doing the beautiful people gimmick and they were going around talking about how they were going to cleanse ugly people one person at a time. I just thought that was freaking awesome what they were doing. And it's just really alarming, I feel, because here is a woman that is nowhere near 35 years old. Homegirl is only 30 years old. So she still has plenty of gas left in her tank. And I just really felt in my heart that this was a scenario where Angelina just really was feeling frustrated with how she was being utilized in the company. And, hey, I don't blame her, especially with all the recent things that's been happening with Hogan coming in and then his daughter coming in, and it's just really starting to look more and more like it's all about possible favoritism. I mean, who could forget the paperwork trouble that Angelina Love had a couple of years back where, unfortunately, TNA, they had to release her from the company because her paperwork to stay legally in America, it wasn't 100% a go. And as a result of that, she needed to get all that resolved first. But TNA, they were so nice. They, They definitely knew they wanted her to come back, and they tried to do everything they could to help her come back, and they try to time it right for her to return. And now you fast forward and you see this stuff happen. You're like, what the hell is going on here? And then we follow that up less than 24 hours later as we reported on our website. We were one of the first people to report it on our website. Shannon Moore, he freaking sends out a tweet during WWE Raw saying that, He asked for his release as well, and he was granted it in that for right now, he's just going to take the time to just be with his loved ones and just chill and that he would have a decision regarding his wrestling future later on during the week. And this just had my brain just just going. And I'm saying to myself, okay, so we got these two. Who else have left? TNA this year because I'm saying to myself, damn, it seems like every month a TNA wrestler is always leaving. So I had to do a little bit of homework. Now, there's probably some names I'm not going to be able to get, but I trust you this, my friends. I'm going to have the most updated list of wrestlers that have left this year before the weekend is out. But so far, this is what I have since I've been able to sit down and take the time that I have been able to get to come up with a few names. And some of these names might surprise you. So, let's kick it off. We got Brian Kendrick. 
We got Jesse Neal. We got Jackie Moore. We got Toxin. This name should get all of you jogging your memories here. Vince Russo. Tracy Brooks. Arcadia. Tony Nice. Now, some of you, you may say, Tony Nice, who? Well, a little story with Tony Nice. He really wasn't being utilized like that. And basically, he went to TNA and said, look, there's this really cool match that I have the opportunity of participating in. It involves a match where I can take on one of my wrestling legends, the uh, Great Muda, I think it was. And he wanted to get the opportunity to wrestle him. I think it was either Great Muda or or Ultimo Dragon. I, I'm not sure. It was, it was some legendary wrestler he grew up idolizing. In a nutshell, folks, TNA, they said, no, you can't do it. And so he's sitting up saying to himself, okay, I'm not being utilized. I'm trying to go do this on the side and bring in some type of income. But these guys are telling me, no, what the hell? So he asked for his release, and they went on ahead. They gave it to him. So Tony Nese, Tony nice, Don West, for those of you that are not aware, longtime announcer Don West, who eventually stepped to the side so that Taz could do his thing at the announcer's table while Don West had focused on the TNA website, the merchandise and all that. He's wrapping things up. Now, either he's already done with the company or he's damn near close on his way out the door. He's at least 95% on his way out because he wants to sit up and he just wants to focus more on his website, Don West Deals. But still might not be a wrestler, but we're talking about TNA talent here. So we have to put Don West on that list, okay? Ric Flair, the blueprint, Matt Morgan, Angelina Love, we just mentioned her, Shannon Moore, we just mentioned her. So grand total, what's that, folks? We got one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen people. Fourteen people, folks. And we only barely have seven months under our belt for this year. I don't know about you, but that sounds very alarming to me. That kind of says to me that there is some stuff going on in that organization. Anytime you can have that amount of talent leave the company, there's something that's not being done right. And I'm going to go a step further than that because some of these names that I might have mentioned, some of you could probably sit up and point to a Shannon Moore and say, well, he really wasn't doing anything for TNA. He wasn't really all that. Uh, I could care less about him. How do you explain Angelina Love? Now, we actually had some WWE fans that tried to compare Angelina Love's departure to Maxine, who was a diva on WWE NXT. And I was very critical of these WWE fans. I said, first of all, do not even breathe Maxine's name in comparison to Angelina Love because Maxine, uh uh-uh, I'm sorry, and I would say it to Maxine if I were able to talk to her on the phone or face-to-face. She has nothing over Angelina Love. Everything that Angelina has accomplished in the wrestling business, I mean, the girl knows how to freaking handle her business if you give her the platform to do so. So let's get that little comparison out the way. Maxine has a long ways to go before she can even be up there with a Madison Rain, with a Tess Mocker, with a Velvet Sky. Because her personality alone, it's not getting the job done. And that's probably one of the reasons why she sat up and quit is because she realized that she really doesn't have what it takes personality-wise. But that's a different story. We're talking about TNA. So 
I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but I just think that it's very alarming that we have all these names, these 14 names that have left the company within the past seven months as Hogan, Bischoff. They've really just been shaking things up. And notice how the talent has been leaving more and more ever since Vince Russo left. Ever since Bruce Pritchard came on board. Very interesting development right here. And I promise you, we're definitely going to be continuing to watch this very carefully. But I just thought that this was something that definitely should have been uh, mentioned. And Lord only knows how many of these people were probably being shown the cold shoulder so that TNA could try to free up money to continue to pay for Sting. Lord only knows how much his salary is to continue to pay for Hulk Hogan's salary, to make room for daughter Brooke Hogan. Lord only knows that might be one of the reasons why some of these people, if not all, were being shown the cold shoulder. Now, speaking of Sting, which we just mentioned a few seconds ago, we got a poll that's up right now, and we're actually getting ready to pull it down. We wanted to share with you all the results of that poll. And we had asked you guys a couple of weeks back if you all have felt that Sting was right for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. We asked you, should Jeff and Jerry Jarrett been inducted at Slammiversary instead of Sting? Now, your choices were, yes, without them, there would be no TNA. Option two, no, Sting going first was right. Option three, not sure. Option four, someone else should have been inducted. Now, here's your results for that poll, folks. We have 58%, just over 58% of you said yes. Without the Jareds, there would be no TNA. 41% of you had said no. Staying going first was right. So we appreciate you all that took the liberty of ask, uh, ask, uh, answering that poll question. We're going to have a new poll question that's going to be up. We'll debut it next week. So keep your eyes peeled on our Twitter feeds throughout the weekend as we'll give you more details about that. We're going to go on ahead now, and we're going to open up our wrestling fan line. We know we have one or two people of you that are on hold right now. So let's go on ahead, and we see that we got Dave from Michigan. Let's get you live on the air right now. Dave, you're live. Hey. Um, so you really, I'm glad you enjoyed that movie. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good, man. It was pretty good. How'd you like Impact tonight? Um, that was a good show. I mean, but there was a few things I didn't like about it. Mm. Like you mentioned earlier, the Destination X, no promo promos or advertising for it really. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a guy in the company no more, why do you continue to show you would think they'd want to get him off that ad as quick as they could. Mm-hmm. But you can see you see Morgan on that uh one commercial I can't think of the name of it, Judge Auto Insurance commercial. Mhm. But Yeah, that makes yeah, that like, makes no sense to me. Why are you yeah, still showing Matt Morgan commercials when He's supposed to be wrapping things up with the company, and you already have announced that uh, Tessmacher is supposed to be the new spokesperson. That, that, Yeah, that really doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I would like to also know, like, since earlier you compared the the Monday Night Raw ratings, I would like to know how TNA's been doing in the summer since they started with, uh, with their live, whole live edition all summer. Now, TNA, they have been doing pretty good. Let me see if I can actually pull that up. If I can't pull that up right now, I don't know. Co-producer Tammy, can you think we could pull that up one time before we go off the air? Share the uh, TNA ratings. I know, I know we recently did a recap summary of it on our website. And, folks, if, um, if we can't cover it on tonight's show before we go off the air, Trust me, we'll definitely have the results of how they've been doing because I know one of us had actually took the time to do a monthly recap for them. I don't see it. I don't know if it's on the main website page, but we definitely covered it. Um, Any other questions you have, Dave? 
Yeah, it's too, out of all those wrestlers you named who were released this year, mm. it's just too bad that I'm at least talking about Angelina Love because a lot of us watch this movie like ever since TNA's been on. Mm. But you would think instead of spending all these big salaries on Sting, Hogan, uh, I think your name is Brooks, yeah. Um, they would actually focus on advertising because that's TNA's biggest flaw in the company is, like, they don't promote their show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Dave, thank you so much for that call, man. We appreciate it. Uh, we let you talk a little longer, but uh, we got to go ahead and wrap the show up, uh, let you guys know what we're going to be doing for this weekend. But, Dave, just to touch up on what he said, folks, that's a very valid point. All the money that they're wasting on these big name talents, and we've actually been saying it for a lot of years, as well as a number of other wrestling shows. But you want to pick my brain, you know, because I know about advertising. I actually used to sit up several years back, and I actually used to work on advertisements for law firm companies and things of that nature. So I know a thing or two about advertising. And, you know, if you're really trying to sell a product, you're trying to get that brand name out there, you got to shell out that cash. You can only be a tight wad, but for so long that if you really want to get yourself that spotlight, you got to put that money out there. So, I mean, it's almost like a good example, just in a nutshell. You open up a new restaurant, right? And you know you got bomb french fries, mumbo sauce, chicken wings, burgers. You know the food is good, but you're trying to figure out a way to bring people in to check out the food. Well, you know that the smell of the food isn't going to work alone. So you got to sit up and you got to try to figure out how much money you're willing to spend to advertise your business, if that means putting out flyers, putting ads, paid ads at that, in the paper, colorful ads, maybe getting a TV spot. What are you willing to do to get your brand, to get your product out there? And that's been a problem for TNA for a lot of years now. They just aren't really able to sit up and really do the right thing in my mind and really put the money out there and it's just one of those I don't know maybe going forward maybe maybe before the year is out or who knows maybe they can free up a little bit more money maybe they could finally focus on their advertising department because right now it doesn't really seem like they have it it seems like the only thing that they're relying on right now solely is their YouTube their Twitter, their Facebook, and they're relying on their website. I can't recall the last time I was able to open up an issue of PWI and, you know, TNA's plugged in there or the last time I was walking down the street and I'm at a bus stop and I see a big old poster of Hawk Hogan, Sting, Robert Roode plugging Impact Wrestling moving to 8 p.m. I know, it's crazy, right? It's ridiculous, but what can you do? I mean, I'll keep beating that drum until somebody in TNA hears me, as I'm sure many of you other wrestling fans, you probably feel that frustration as well, especially now that the brand is slowly, successfully starting to rebrand itself. The product is definitely looking better as opposed to where it was six months ago, but sometimes you just say, man, that progress, I like that it's happening, but I need it to happen at a faster rate. Well, here's what we got planned for the weekend, folks. So tomorrow night, late Friday night, probably around 11 o'clock at night, we're going to upload an exclusive for YouTube. So you YouTube subscribers that's listening to this, special treat for you guys. It's that time again. We're getting ready to do another Call That Match edition. I'm going to be covering the TNA Destination X pay-per-view. I'm going to be giving you my in-depth analysis of who I think is going to win, which match, what storylines the losers and the winners need to go through. It's going to be really cool. Check that out. And, of course, we're going to be having our TNA Destination X pay-per-view post-show. 
You'll be able to check that out at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Sunday, immediately following the pay-per-view. So be sure to check that out as well, folks. And in the meantime, that is going to do it. We are done for now. Co-producer Tammy, were you able to get us some numbers in time? No, unfortunately, that was for that was for a one particular episode. So we got a cliffhanger right there. So I promise you guys, next week we'll give you guys a monthly breakdown of how TNA has done last month leading all the way up into what they just did tonight. That will be a really good cliffhanger piece for you guys right there. Do join us. This Sunday night for our TNA Destination X pay-per-view post-show. Until we hear from you guys this Sunday, you all be safe, be kind to one another. Check out our episodes downloadable on the iTunes and Zoom marketplaces, keywords, the RCWR show. Everybody have a good weekend, and we'll see you this Sunday. Take care, folks. Thanks for checking out the show. And actually, thanks to those of you in the chat room for talking about wrestling tonight. Really appreciate it. Let's do it again this Sunday. Take care, folks.